Mr. Franco's a whack job. Needs to be handled. Well, as far as I can understand, Franco's got Jason locked in some kind of freaky mind game. He stole Claudia's body for leverage. He's trying to get Jason to acknowledge that he's some kind of fellow artist or some crap like Jason that. made a mistake. He underestimated uh, how far Franco would take things. Now he's running around half crazed, trying to figure out what Franco did with Sam. That's why I'm turning to you. We have to handle the situation. We can't let Franco call the shots. You ready to go to work? I think you know I'll do whatever you need, or you wouldn't call me, right? You're right. We got, we got off to a rocky start. I, I had my doubts about your ability to make a place for yourself in my organization. But you know what? You proved me wrong. Not only that, you saved my life for good measure. And I'm just, I'm glad you got my bag, Dominic. So, as things stand right now, the, the, the police, the only way the police can handle Claudia is as a missing person. But, if her body turns up, then that's a game changer. They'll try it in the forensics team with their, with their high-tech tricks and all that. You know how much police love that. They may even have proof of who killed her, and that could never happen, okay? So, um, we got to get Claudia's body back. Any idea as to how? Yes, I, I'm, uh, I'm sending you out to find her. Well, that's a tall order, boss. I mean, Claudia's body could be anywhere. It'd be good if I could call Jason. He said contact with no, Franco. No, Jason, Jason, all Jason can think about right now is finding Sam, and I don't blame him. We can't wait. OK, that's cool. I just want you to understand I'm sort of flying blind here. I have no doubt that you can do the job. I trust you. Hey, you up for some company? A visit from a beautiful woman, yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling? <sighs> like what I almost was, roadkill. It helps seeing your pretty smile. Well, um, you definitely look a lot better. It was touch and go there for a while. Yeah, so I hear. Doc says if you hadn't gotten me to the ER as fast as you did, I'd be a goner. Thank you. My wife thanks you. My kids thank you. That's the least I could do. <sighs> Can I ask what really happened? Well, I forgot the first rule anybody's mother ever teaches them. Look both ways before you cross the street. That car didn't even slow down. I guess we were both distracted. OK. <laughs> Being subtle isn't getting us anywhere, so I'm just going to come right out and say it. Why would Franco want to kill you? You know, if Jason's right and this is all about leverage, Franco has no motive to dump Claudia's body with the cops. But you're acting as though Franco will act in a logical way. Well, don't we have to do that? Step out the logical process of the baseline of behavior, then run off any possible tangents from there? You have a unique way of breaking things down. But I like it. That's what I was talking about earlier. It's a, it's a great quality to have. Well, look, before Franco can do anything, he's got to get Claudia's body to a safe place. That means off the beaten path, probably somewhere damn cold. Freezer unit. Yeah. I mean, maybe we can, we can really use Spinelli's help or something like this. No, no, no. Spinelli's he's with Jason. I don't want him distracted. Hey, hey buddy, can you knock next time? How much, how much did you, did you just hear? Why? Dominic, go ahead and get started on what we talked no, about. No, I want to know what you're talking about. Dom, go ahead, just go, Dominic. Dad, I know you're pissed at me for drinking and driving. I hey. Hey. You here to see Ronnie? Yeah. Yeah, you? Mm-hmm. I just left his room. Bend. He's awake. OK. <laughs> OK, what? Look, Lou, I know you well enough to know that you were in there trying to get information about this hit and run. Yeah, I, I asked him why Franco would want him killed, if that's what really happened. And what did he say? Same thing he's always said, that he should have been more careful crossing the street. Why? You don't believe him? <laughs> you run by me again when you said you saw that night. 
not much. I turned a corner and Ronnie was flying over the hood of a black sports car that was not even slowing down. I mean, it seemed deliberate to me, but who knows? So Ronnie gets mowed down. Franco shows up in his room and leaves a signature tag on a respirator. No way this hit and run is anything but deliberate. You know, it is possible that Franco hit Ronnie by accident and then came to the hospital to see if he was okay. And he felt the irresistible urge to tag some hospital equipment before he left? Mm, you put it that way. Why? Well, what do you think really happened then? <sighs> Something I don't like, that Ronnie and Franco are connected somehow, that this whole thing has been connected all along and I just didn't see it. How so? It's the tagging. It's deliberate, it's calculated, it's all the same. I mean, I was so green on that first murder scene back in 03. I looked at the Tiger bus as more of a distraction than anything else. Ronnie told me not to make a big deal out of it, to slap him with a misdemeanor and boot him out. Wait, Ronnie worked Franco's case? That's just it. There was no case. I wrote up a citation and let him go. I missed what was right in front of me, and I let a serial killer walk. Hey, what's going on? What's up, Pally? What, no coffee and donuts? I was a lot kinder to you when you were stuck in here. Yeah, when well, you're on a liquid diet. Doctor's orders. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe you could bend the rules. That would be your specialty, wouldn't it, Ronnie? What are you talking about? I busted Franco for tagging half a block from a murder scene back in 03. My good buddy and mentor, that would be you, took charge of that bust. Said it was a misdemeanor, that it wasn't worth the time when there were all these other crimes that needed to be solved. You know, I didn't see it then, Ronnie, but it's becoming real clear to me now. You were covering for Franco. You need to tell me why. 